Well, good morning, Bob. Good morning, Bill. It's a Monday morning, and we're talking about a lot of things in the mortgage business, specifically Ben Bernanke being denied for a mortgage. A yeah. recent yes. I mean, isn't that something? Uh... Former chair of the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve and chair of the Econ. That's the problem. Chair of the Econ. <laughs> the all right. Well, you know, some economists make a lot of money. But <laughs> it's not about how much you make, it's about your ability to repay. All right? Yeah, and, you know, and so he was probably a bad risk. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's something because, I mean, you know, he just, he's got book deals, he's got speaking engagements. What do you uh, think? I mean, let's just, he's got a million, he had, a, he had a $800,000 mortgage on a million dollar house, roughly. I right, think that's yeah. what's, I mean, these are round numbers. And, and what do you think he'll make this year? Two or three million dollars? I would think, you know, and but uh, so formulaic now that uh, and everybody's talking about loosening credit standards, but there's a great example. <laughs> it, it's it's it has not to, loose. It, in fact, he even said afterwards, maybe we got a bit too tight. Yeah, you know, a whole block. Uh, well, so so the reason for that is it's the previous two years that they look at, and what does the Fed show back like two hundred thousand a year, two twenty five? Yeah, I don't know some. And, and and so it's a really it's a. It's almost a community service kind of endeavor, all right, sure. for someone yeah. of his stature. Yeah. And, and and so it's government service, and, and he's given his time to the country. He was eight years at the helm. That's a big deal. The man ought to at least be able to refinance his mortgage. You would think. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And, oh. you know, it's, I'm sure some banker said, this is justice, all right? <laughs> this we'll is get justice. You. Exactly. <laughs> We're going to get you. I bet they enjoy, you think they enjoyed saying no? I oh, I don't know. I, I've never heard of a loan officer that enjoyed saying well, no. Well, a loan officer, no, but an underwriter. An underwriter enjoys saying no. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> they may not have known who he was. Uh, they may not have known who he was. Well, yeah, I guess they don't. May, some of them don't read the paper. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be blind review, right? And yeah. so, so let's let's have they, have they gone too far? Have have mortgage standards gone too far? Too yeah, far? Absolutely. So what yeah. makes them come back? Rising property values. That will be a lot of it. Increasing unemployment. Employment numbers were good this last week. Now five point nine. Is that because less people are looking? Because you would think. Now let's just step back and be objective about the numbers. You either believe the numbers or that you don't, right? And so if you believe the numbers, you would say, hey, 5.9 is getting pretty good. Yeah. You know, that's like getting maybe, what's the long-term rate of full employment? And, you know, what is it? Is it 5? It's 5. It's some 4.5. I mean, yeah, it I depends mean, on what you know. I mean, well, I don't know what the number is, but, we're, you know, we're, we're, gonna, getting, we're, close, we're, getting, yeah. we're getting close. But, yeah, there are a lot of people who are have stopped looking. There are a lot of people who are underemployed who will, if the economy really takes off, will actually come back into the labor market. Well, and, and there, so, was a, there was a discussion this morning on some of the business talk shows, and they were focused on... The numbers are not, the, the, the American public doesn't feel that good. The numbers are okay, they're getting yeah. better, but we don't feel that good. What's the emotional component? Because it just, it people don't, they just like, they don't like what's going on. Well, I mean, yeah, there's a reason. <laughs> well, <laughs> because, because, but the, you know, the data does not, the data show that the economy's getting better. Well, yeah, but the data can't measure everything. I mean, it's oh, very specific. Measure measure. Emotion? Well, it's not just emotion, but it can't measure Feelings? the. Uh, I mean, they. You know, when people are putting together these statistics, they're creating a very specific box, and what they're measuring are the number of new jobs that are being created, and the number of people who are actively looking for work. Okay. The box is it big or small? It's a pretty narrow, constrained. So thing my that thinking measuring. is pretty easy for my thinking to be outside the box, right? It's always <laughs> outside. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so they've got this narrow measure of productivity, employment, right. wage growth, all that stuff. They look pretty good. I mean, you go back and look at the numbers. Well, Five point nine is pretty good. Right, but you know, it's like anything else. It's uh, it's like the constraints that we had on mortgages. You know, they say they look good under the times that they were built, and to you know to manage the things that they were trying to manage. But as over time, things change, and so the measurements that they have today are probably not the best measurements. 
in terms of really understanding what's going on. There are people who try and capture the number who are uh, not fully employed, the people who are underemployed. So you qualify to do stop. more. Yeah. So you qualify to do more, and you take a lesser wage, right? Because you need some money. Exactly. And people try and measure those things, but they're very, very difficult to measure. And so people use the number that's always out there. You know, that this is the number we've been using for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and so let's just keep using the same number with an asterisk by it that says, it's not a very good number. <laughs> but as long as it's the same number, period after period after period, unless things underlying chain, it'll be okay. But what you're saying, and others are saying, is that the underlying fundamentals have changed. They have, yeah. And so, you know, I think the reason people don't feel so great is that they know of people who are looking for work, have been unemployed for a long time. Long-term unemployment is very, very high. Uh, and well, the, uh, the labor, labor force participation rate, which is a sort of a proxy right. for what you're talking about, is going down. It's going down, and people don't know exactly why. I mean, even uh, for even for people in the forty-eight year old age category, that's true. it's going down. Right, and some of that is people going back to school. Some people getting retrained. Can you imagine going job. back to the PhD program? Well, actually, I can. Because remember, <laughs> I went back to school to get mine when I, I was forty. <laughs> I know, but I'm talking about today. Oh, well, that would. But be you're good. not forty. Today. No, no, no. That's that, that would be a hard go. <laughs> and, and, and so, think about people picking everything up and going back to school. Now, it was very rewarding in terms of the learning and that sort of thing. I haven't done the present value, but I'm not sure the numbers work out. No, but they don't necessarily have to go back for a PhD. They can go back masters. and learn a well, not even a master's. They can go skills. learn a new different trade. That's you know, right. They could pick up some. Uh, uh, accounting basics, you know, to do some bookkeeping. They could, I, uh, you know, I, I'm told that they're having a lot of trouble in North Dakota getting welders for some of those oil rigs. I right. mean, it's a big deal. It's huge. And, and, and they're uh, paying top dollar. Uh, I listened to some economists discuss the unemployment rate in some of the oil field areas. Right. And they said, if you want to find out who's living in the $200,000 houses, you need to go to the fast food restaurants and look at the people that are working there because all the skilled people living in the million dollar houses. You're right, exactly. It's and the, and the prices are so high because the supply is so short. It you is. Know? Uh, there are a lot of people in the building trades that are moving up there because they're <laughs> building like crazy right now, and it's justified. It's justified. It's uh, uh, there was an article in the. Uh, Orange County Register this past week. Uh, that you sent me, and you said in there, this this is an article I'd like for us to discuss, and it is not on the New York Times. Right. <laughs> First time, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny, you, the Orange County Register used to be a, a primary source for housing and mortgage information. It used to be very active. And then the whole mortgage industry moved out of California, and it's, you it's, don't trying, see those it's trying to come back. Though. Yeah, it's it is trying, trying to come back. back. It's a huge area of economic activity, especially in real estate and mortgage lending. Right. But uh, one of my old professors is uh, former. Professor, was, uh, or maybe he's old too. I don't know, but he's former. Former. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, recently wrote a book saying uh, uh, it's entitled Rethinking the Housing Bubble, and I haven't read it. I need to read it, but I haven't read it yet. But uh, he was talking in there about a lot of the features. He's an expert in bubbles, and so he applied that to the housing uh, bubble. And uh, He talked about the housing bubble being set up in the Clinton years when we had all these, the change in the tax laws. Yeah, it was funny because he, he attributes the initial spark to tax reduction. So on your home, to be more specific, yeah. on your home, you had very preferential tax, personal tax treatment when you sold that home. Uh -huh. As well as when you owned it, you got the interest deduction and some other deductions. Right. And then when you sold the home, you got to defer those taxes as long as you bought a bigger home. Right. So there was a natural built-in incentive from a tax structure standpoint to buy a bigger house. Trade up. Right. And you know, and, and it's a trigger, and if you have the proper mechanisms in the market, you'll have a increase in demand, but it'll fairly quickly 
go back to the intrinsic value of the houses. So that bubble will go up and then be damped back down. But what happened in this case was that there was an increase in this demand and everybody just jumped on that bandwagon. Credit uh, was just opened up wide. All sorts of new uh, mechanism, financial tools were made available that had never been made available before. And there was this flood of credit and just, just the whole market just swept up. And, uh, um, and so now, you know, they, they pulled it back down, but maybe too far. And Well, speaking of being swept up, we've swept up all our time. We're out of time. <laughs> this is the end of today's FNC's Morning View. I'm Bill Rayburn with Bob Dorsey. You all have a fantastic week. Bye, Bob. Goodbye.